a lot of people want to know you're one of the most productive and brilliant people in the history of AI. What does a productive day in the life of Andre Karpathy look like? What time do you wake up? Because imagine um, some kind of dance between the average productive day and a perfect productive day. So the perfect productive day is the thing we strive towards and the average is kind of what it kind of converges to given yep. all the mistakes and right. human eventualities and so on. Yep. So what, what time do you wake up? Are you a morning person? Uh, I'm not a morning person. I'm a night owl for sure. Mm -hmm. Is I it think, stable or not? Uh, it's semi-stable, like eight, eight or nine or something like that. Uh, during my PhD, uh, it was even later. I used to go to sleep usually at 3 a.m. I think uh, the a.m. hours are are precious and very interesting time to work because everyone is asleep. Um, at, at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m., the East Coast is awake. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's already activity. There's already some text messages, whatever. There's stuff happening. You can go on like some news website and there's stuff happening. It's distracting. Mm -hmm. uh, at 3 a.m., everything is totally quiet. And so you're not going to be bothered and you have solid chunks of time to do work. Um, so I like those periods. Um, night owl by default. And then I think like productive time, basically, um, what I like to do is you need uh, you need to like build some momentum on the problem uh, without too much distraction. And um, you need to load your RAM, <laughs> uh, your working memory with that problem. Mm -hmm. And then you need to be obsessed with it when you're taking a shower, when you're falling asleep. You need to be obsessed with the problem and it's fully in your memory and you're ready to wake up and work on it right there. So it is a scale of... Uh is this in a scale, temporal scale of a single day or a couple of days, a week, yeah. a month? So I can't talk about one day basically in isolation because it, it's a whole process. When I want to get when I want to get productive in the problem, I feel like I need a span of a few days where I can really get in on that problem, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be interrupted. And I'm going to just uh, be completely obsessed with that problem, and that's where I do most of my good work. I would say. You've done a bunch of cool, like little projects in a very short amount of time, very quickly. So that that requires you just focusing on it. Yeah, basically, I need to load my working memory with the problem, and I need to be productive because there's always like a huge fixed cost to approaching any problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like uh, I was struggling with this, for example, at Tesla because I want to work on like small side project, but okay, you first need to figure out, oh, okay, I need to SSH into my cluster, I need to bring up a VS Code editor so I can like work on this. I need to, I I run into some stupid error because of some reason. Like you're not at a point where you can be just productive right away. Mm -hmm. You are facing barriers, and so it's about uh, really removing all of that barrier and you're able to go into the problem and you have the full problem loaded in your memory. And somehow avoiding distractions of all different yes. forms, like uh, news stories, emails, but also distractions from other interesting projects that you previously worked on or currently working yeah. on and so on. Yeah. You just want to really focus yeah. your mind. And I mean, I can take some time off for distractions and in between, but I think it can't be too much. Uh, you know, most of your day is sort of like spent on that problem. And then, you know, I drink coffee, I have my morning routine, I look at some news, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter, Hacker News, Wall Street Journal, et cetera. So it's you, great. You, so basically <laughs> you, you wake up, you have some coffee, are you trying to get to work as quickly as possible? Or do you do take in this diet of of like, what the hell is happening in the world first? I am, I do find it interesting to know about the world. I don't know that it's useful or good, but it is part of my routine right now. So I do read through a bunch of news articles and I wanna be informed and um, I'm suspicious of it. I'm suspicious of the practice, but currently that's where I am. <laughs> oh, you mean suspicious about the positive effect yeah. of that practice on yes. your productivity and your well-being? My well-being psychologically, yeah. And also on your ability to deeply understand the world because how, there's a bunch of sources of information. You're not really focused on deeply integrating yeah, it. Yeah, it's a little distracting. You're, yeah. yeah. In terms of a perfectly productive day, for how long of a stretch of time in one session do you try to work and focus on a thing? A couple hours, is it one hour, is it 30 minutes, is it 10 minutes? I can probably go like a small few hours and then I need some breaks in between for like food and stuff. And uh, yeah, but I think like uh, it's still really hard to accumulate hours. I was using a tracker that told me exactly how much time I spent coding any one day. And even on a very productive day, I still spent only like six or eight hours. Yeah. And it's just because there's so much padding, commute, talking to people, food, etc. There's like the cost of life. <laughs> just living and sustaining and homeostasis <laughs> and just maintaining yourself as a human is very high. <laughs> and and that there seems to be a desire within the human mind to to uh, to participate in society that creates that padding. Yeah. Because I yeah, the the most productive days I've ever had is just completely from start to finish, just tuning out everything. Yeah. And just yes. sitting there. Yes. And then and then you could do more than six and eight hours. Yeah. Is there some wisdom about 
what gives you strength to do like uh, tough days of long focus? Yeah, just like whenever I get obsessed about a problem, something just needs to work. Something just needs to exist. It needs to exist, and you, so you're able to deal with bugs and programming issues and technical issues and uh, design decisions that turn out to be the wrong ones. You're able to think through all of yeah. that, given given that you want yeah. a thing to exist. Yeah, it needs to exist. And then I think uh, to me also a big factor is, uh, you know, are other humans are going to appreciate it? Are they going to like it? Mm -hmm. That's a big part of my motivation. If I'm helping humans and they seem happy, they say nice things, uh, they tweet about it or whatever, mm -hmm. that gives me pleasure because I'm doing something useful. So like you do see yourself sharing it with the world, like whether yeah. it's on GitHub or the blog post or through videos. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Like suppose I did all these things, but did not share them. I don't think I would have the same amount of motivation that I can build up. You enjoy the feeling of other people um, gaining value and yeah. happiness from the stuff you've created. Yeah. Uh, what about diet? Is there, I, I saw you played with in, intermittent fasting. You fast? Does that I help? with everything. You played with, <laughs> with the things you played, what's been most beneficial to the your ability to mentally focus on a thing? And just mental, mental productivity and happiness. You still fast? Yeah, I still fast, uh, but uh, I do intermittent fasting. But really what it means at the end of the day is I skip breakfast. Yeah. So I do 18-6 uh, roughly by default when I'm in my steady state. If I'm traveling or doing something else, I will break the rules. But in my steady state, I do 18-6. Uh, so I eat only from 12 to 6. Uh, not a hard rule, and I break it often, but that's my default. And then, um, yeah, I've done a bunch of uh, random experiments. For the most part right now, uh, where I've been for the last year and a half, I want to say, is I'm um, plant-based or plant-forward. I heard plant-forward. It sounds better. Mean exactly. I don't actually know what the difference is, but All it right. sounds better in my mind. Uh, but it just means I, I prefer uh, plant-based food. And, uh, Raw or cooked? Or... I prefer cooked uh, and plant-based. So plant-based, uh, forgive me, I don't actually know how wide the category of plant <laughs> entails. Well, plant-based like, just means that you're not uh, like militant about it and like, you can flex. Yeah. And uh, you just prefer to eat plants. And you know, you're not making, you're not trying to influence other people. And if someone is, you come to someone's house party and they serve you a steak that they're really proud of, you will yeah. eat it. Yes, uh, right, you're just not like, judgmental. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, that's, um, I'm the flip side of that, but I'm very sort of flexible. Have you tried doing one meal a day? Uh, I have uh, accidentally, not consistently, <laughs> but I've accidentally had that. I don't, I don't like it. I think yeah. it makes me feel uh, not good. It's too, it's too much, too much of a hit. Yeah. And uh, so currently I have about two meals a day, 12 and six. I, I do that nonstop. I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. I do one meal a day. Okay. It's, it's interesting. It's an interesting feeling. Have you ever fasted longer than a day? Yeah, I've, I've done a bunch of water fasts because I was curious what happens. What happens? Uh, <laughs> Anything interesting? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, what's interesting is that you're hungry for two days. And then I, starting day three or so, you're not hungry. <laughs> it's like such a weird feeling because you haven't eaten in a few days and you're yeah. not hungry. Isn't that weird? Is it's that really weird. One, one of the many weird things about human biology. Yeah. It figures something out. It finds finds another source of energy or something like that, yeah. or, or, or uh, relaxes the system. I don't know how yeah, that works. Yeah, the body is like, you're hungry, you're hungry, and then it just gives up. It's like, okay, I guess we're fasting now. There's yeah. nothing. <laughs> and then it's just kind of like focuses on trying to make you not hungry uh, and you know not feel the, the damage of that and uh, trying to give you some space to figure out the food situation. <laughs> so are you still to this day most productive uh, at night? I would say I am, but it is really hard to maintain my PhD schedule. Um, especially when I was say working at Tesla and so on, it's a non-starter. Uh, so, but even now, like, you know, people want to meet for various events. They, society lives in a certain period of time yeah. and you sort of have to like work so with that. It's, it's hard to like do a social thing and then after that return and do work. Yeah. It's just really hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I try when I do social things, I try not to do too, uh, too much drinking so I can return and uh, continue doing work. Yeah. Um, but at, at Tesla, is there is there convergence? Like not Tesla, but any any company, is there convergence towards a schedule, or is there more? <laughs> is, is that how humans behave when they collaborate? I need to learn about this. Do yeah, they, do they try to keep mm -hmm. a, a consistent schedule where you're all awake at the same time? I mean, I do try to create a routine, and I cr try to create a steady state in which I'm uh, comfortable in. Uh, so I have a morning routine, I have a day routine. I try to keep things to a steady state, and um, things are predictable and then you can sort of just like your body just sort of like sticks to that. And if you try to stress that a little too much, it will create uh you know, when you're traveling and you're dealing with jet lag, you're not able to really ascend to, you know, where you need to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's weird too mind. about humans with the habits and stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on work-life balance? 
throughout a human lifetime. So Tesla in part was known for sort of pushing people to their limits in terms of what they're able to do, in terms of what they're uh, trying to do, in terms of how much they work, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I will say Tesla gets a little too much uh, bad rep for this mm-hmm. because what's happening is Tesla, is a, it's a bursty environment. Uh, so I would say the baseline, uh, my only point of reference is Google, where I've interned three times and I saw what it's like inside Google and, and DeepMind. Um, I would say the baseline is higher than that, but then there's a punctuated equilibrium where once in a while there's a fire and uh, someone, like people mm-hmm. work really hard. And so it ha- it's spiky and bursty. And then all the stories get collected. At About the, the bursts. Yeah. And then it gives the appearance of like total insanity, but actually it's just a bit more intense environment. <laughs> and there are fires and sprints. And so I think, uh, you know, definitely though, I, I would say um, it's a more intense environment than something you would get. At but you're, in your personal, forget all of that. Just in your own personal life, um, what do you think about the happiness of a human being, uh, a brilliant person like yourself, about finding a balance between work and life, or is it such a thing, a, 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 not a good thought experiment? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think balance is good, <laughs> but I also love to have sprints that are out of distribution. And that's when I think I've been pretty uh, creative and um, as well. So sprints out of distribution means that most of the time you you have a yeah. quote unquote balance. I have balance most of the time. But I like being obsessed with something once in a while. Once in a while is what? Once a week, once a month, once a year? Yeah, probably like say once a month or something. Yeah. And that's when we get a new GitHub repo from Andre. Yeah, that's when you like really care about a problem. It must exist. This will be awesome. You're obsessed with it. And now you can't just do it on that day. You need to pay the fixed cost of getting into the groove. Yeah. And then you need to stay there for a while. And then society will come and they will try to mess with you and they will try to distract you. Yeah. yeah. The worst thing is like a person who's like, I just need five minutes of your time. Yeah. This is, the cost of that is not five minutes. Yes. And society needs to change how it thinks about <laughs> just five minutes of your time. <laughs> right. It's, it's never, it's never, just one minute, just, just 30, just a quick What's thing. the big deal? Why are you being yeah. so? Yeah. No, 